Good morning to everyone and welcome to the ISGAN virtual learning of today. In the today webinar, we will present uh, the recipients of the ninth ISGAN award webinar, in particular, the excellence in artificial intelligence for smart grids. This, this webinar is hosted by ISGAN. ISGAN is the short name for the International Smart Grid Action Network, a technology collaboration program of, of the International Energy Agency. ISGAN is also an initiative of the Clean Energy Ministerial, formally established in 2011. ISGAN creates a strategic platform to support high level government attention and action for the accelerated development and deployment of smarter and clear electricity grids around the world. ISGAN consists of 27 contracted parties. They nominate representatives for the executive committee headed by the presidium and assisted by two co secretariats. ISGAN's vision is to accelerate progress on key aspects of grid market policy, technology, and investment through the voluntary participation by gover government in projects and programs. ISGAN activities focus on five principal areas policy standards and regulation, finance and business models, technology system development, workforce skills and knowledge, user and consumer engagement. ISGAN facilitates dynamic knowledge sharing, technical assistance, peer review, and project coordination among its contracted parties. The ISGAN value proposition relies on conferences and workshops, policy and technology briefs, discussion and technical papers, casebooks, and webinars, like this one. Within ISGAN, virtual learning offers the ISGAN community means of rational and continuous technical skill update in the field of smart grids. The virtual learning is proposed as a set of e-learning and reading core modules dealing with the entire value chain of smart grid. The webinar of today concerns the ninth ISGAN Award, Excellence in the Artificial Intelligence for Smart Grids. ISGAN Award of Excellence recognizes excellence in smart grids around the world. Each round of the competition focuses on teams that showcase innovation solutions for critical aspects of smart grid modernization. At this event, ISGAN will honor excellence on artificial intelligence for smart grids in partnership with Global Smart Energy Federation. This round of award competition highlights the critical role of AI technologies for smart grids in accelerating decarbonization and the necessity of modernization. During the webinar, the honorees will share project highlights that can be adapted or adopted in another market and regions. The speakers of today are Luisa Matos from CleanVault, Sebastian Brun from Enedis, Heian Sun Lee from Kepco, and Gautam Kumar from IntelliSmart. Please use the question and answer tool to pose the question to the speakers that we present by the, at the end of the presentation, in which we will have a question and answer uh, round, round table. The recording of, the, of this webinar will be available to the ISGAN YouTube channel uh, as usual, together with all the, all the other recordings of our past webinars. Now, I give the floor to Chloe from ISGAN uh, uh, Co-Secretariat that uh, will present uh, uh, some aspects regarding the ISGAN award. Good morning and good evening, everyone. This is Chloe Yoon, ISGAN Co-Secretariat, and I'm also playing a role as an ISGAN Award Coordinator. Sharing our knowledge and experiences on clean energy is a big part of what the ISGAN is all about. The ISGAN Award of Excellence are not just about a trophy or competition, but really capturing the essence of what makes this project so special and sharing knowledge with others around the world. Sorry, I had some technical issues. So 
The ISCAN Hours of Excellence were launched to recognize excellence in smart grid project policies and programs around the world. The ISCAN Awards seek to leverage leadership and innovation in smart grids to accelerate the global exchange of best practices and promote the replications or adaptation of a proven concept in other markets, countries, and regions. By showcasing exemplars in the global smart grid community, these canals promote a shared global understanding of the value that smart electricity systems can bring, address gaps in related technology and tools, and create opportunities for more peer-to-peer -peer learning and engagement. It also draws attention to value offered by the smart grid systems. Each round of the ISCAN Award is focused on the theme that is focused on emerging technologies for energy transition and grid modernizations. Winning projects are recognized during a ceremony at the annual Clean Energy Ministerial Meeting and also in ISCAN programs and proceedings. ISCAN is implementing the Award of Excellence competition in partnership with the Global Smart Energy Federation, aka GSEF. GSEF is a global stakeholder organization committed to creating smarter, cleaner, electrical systems around the world and is comprised of national smart grid associations for, for forward-looking utilities and think tank from around, around the globe working in the energy transition and clean, clean transportation. This year's award cycle was the ninth competition, and its theme was excellence in artificial intelligence for smart grid. The focus of this competition is to recognize one or more projects that exhibit excellence in applications of artificial intelligence tools successfully in the electricity sector and demonstrated its result in any of the areas like energy efficiency, energy theft detection, revenue maximization, and accurate demand forecasting and grid asset optimizations. The award honorees were selected by a highly distinguished international jury in collaboration with GSEF, and I'm really happy to introduce our awarded recipients of this year's award. The winner is the project Flex Unity Scaling Up Power Flexible Communities Business Model Empowered by Blockchain and AI Conducted by CleanWatch from Portugal. CleanWatch is represented today by their CIO, CPO, and the co-founder, Luisa Matos. Next, the runner-up is Line, the new predictive maintenance tool for Enedis from France. Anadis is represented today by Sebastian Brie, the International Smart Grid Project Manager from Anadis. The first of the two honorable mention is awarded to the AI-based distribution grid load and asset state production system conducted by Korea Electric Power Corporation, the CAPCO from the Republic of Korea. This project is represented by Hesan Lee from CAPCO. The second honorable mention is awarded to AI and machine learning powered enterprise analytics for power distribution companies conducted by Intel Smart Infrastructure from India. They are represented today by Gumta Kumar, CTO of Intel Smart. It is my last slide, and I hope you all enjoy this session. Thank you so very much. Good morning. I'm Luisa Mats from uh, CleanWatts, and I'm here to present uh, the project uh, Flex Unity. So the project Flex Unity was a project funded by the European Commission um, and was uh, developed uh, with our partners LUT, Electric Corby, Simple Energia, and Nestor. Um, the main objectives of this project was uh, to focus on how we can scale up virtual power plant technology enabled with uh, AI uh, technology and blockchain um, applied to the concept of energy communities. We were aiming, aiming to uh, develop and business and validate these business models with these communities and then have 
uh, um, an assessment on three levels of business model so that we can could analyze the benefits for multiple stakeholders with, uh, within an energy community. So we evaluated at the end user level with the peer-to-peer -peer business models. Also, uh, we evaluated the business models for the retailers and aggregators. Uh, and finally, we analyzed a, a new procurement model for the TSO to procure flexibility from uh, energy communities. We implemented two pilots. Um, to validate the optimization algorithms that we that we developed, uh, so the main innovations are really uh, um, multiple, uh, touching on multiple areas from the areas of the business models where we did uh, develop new ones, from the technology side, developing the new AI uh, technology to optimize flexible energy communities. Um, and assessing the, the market and being able to uh, provide new services to, to the market, uh, addressing uh, dynamic energy tariffs as well for uh, energy communities and be able to um, assess real-time flexibility and how to automate, uh, automate the, the control of distributed energy resources. So the, the, the basis of our project was energy communities. Um, we have been de deploying energy communities and we wanted to um, research further on how we can actually create more benefits to the multiple stakeholders uh, in a way that we could manage an energy community as a, a flexible energy community through the VPP tool uh, that we developed. So we, we have the, the overall concept of energy community where we can have multiple uh, prosumers, we can have a big prosumer with energy surplus that is being shared among the many, the, the many consumers, um, and then we have multiple uh, consumers connected. In this uh, project, we deploy these uh, pilots with different concepts of community. So we deployed um, the community, uh, uh, localized community in uh, in the UK, in Corby, and in uh, Portugal and Spain, we evaluated, implemented, uh, distributed like a virtual energy community to assess different kind of benefits. We connected multiple assets behind the meter. Um, namely, namely batteries, heat pumps, EV chargers, uh, and connected also with inverters from from the the PVs. And additionally, we bring also we brought also the DSO smart meter data to to our tool. So. The, the, the idea was actually to connect multiple flexible loads uh, that are behind the meter with whom we can actually create more benefits and we can uh, assess those benefits. So basically by uh, aggregating flexible energy loads for peak shaving or, or load shifting, we can deploy the, those different business models uh, to serve different purposes. So we can provide service to the grid, we can use this flexibility to optimize the energy communities in in a way that we can have additional savings for the members of the community. And we can also see from the perspective of a retailer uh, or an aggregator how we can actually um, utilize this flexibility to optimize the, the portfolio of, of um, assets in a, in a utility. So um, the pilot, as I mentioned, was uh, the two pilots were uh, were were implemented. Uh, we had one in the UK uh, in Corby, where we had a more like localized energy uh, community setting, and in Iberia we had a distributed configuration with multiple um, members with uh, in in Portugal and Spain, so that we can could assess a virtual concept of an energy community. In terms of um, assets uh, and the size of these communities, so um, in the UK uh, we had 20 homes um, with PV and 10 without PV so that we could then do the energy sharing and we also included four non-residential sites, so CNI customers that were connected. Um, the overall uh, size in terms of generation in the UK was 191 and the total flexibility to 117 and 16, sorry, and uh, the, the amount of connected devices were 
180. And in, in Portugal and Spain, similar uh, uh, size of the community, um, uh, we had more flexibility connected uh, 333 and about 100 of kilowatt um, peak in terms of power uh, connected or generation connected and 200 IoT devices. So um, we set, uh, we developed the AI algorithms uh, to enable the self-balancing of energy communities. Uh, we focus on connecting small loads, so behind the meter uh, uh, small loads in CNI and uh, homes, um, to, to assess how we could actually bring more benefits to these energy communities, um, and also see how we could use this flexibility to provide services to, to the grid as well. Um, we, we had a couple of challenges here um, to be able to simplify the complexity of assessing these communities. Um, we, we were able actually then to get to, to results with, uh, with some interesting benefits that I will share in a moment. Um, in terms of business models, uh, we de develop and calculated uh, the benefits of um, all of these business models, so the peer-to-peer -peer energy sharing, with both cases where we could have competitive peer-to-peer -peer case, uh, and also where we could have a peer-to-peer -peer energy sharing with uh, energy community managers, so basically a different kind of ownership models. Uh, in the first, the competitive peer-to-peer, -peer, the ownership is distributed, so each uh, home uh, would own their own PV uh, and uh, flexible assets, and in the case, the second case, we would have um, one owner, so centralized ownership, and then we would be sharing those, the energy in the community. And then we assessed also how the benefits would change if we add uh, flexibility as well. So how much uh, additional savings we would get for the community members. And of course, then to deploy um, all of this flexibility, we implemented the algorithms for the optimizing the, the communities that we develop in a way that we could, could actually match uh, the peak of generation um, with the peak of consumption. So that was one of the main goals, assessing these benefits. In terms of results, um, in the UK pilot, um, uh, these are the, the main results. So we were able to um, have with additional 10% of surplus that we were sharing among the community members, we were able to reach uh, additional um, 13, uh, uh, about 13% of uh, savings by sharing the surplus. Um, by adding the flexibility that was uh, there available, we were able to increase uh, more, about 3%. Um, and then we stressed the scenario to see how this would look like if we actually would size a community with more generation than the one that we would have to match with self-consumption and this is one of the main interesting uh, outcomes of this project is what happens when you have more generation than uh, the consumption uh, in a certain moment within a community so going beyond the self-consumption scenario so we had additional like 20 percent surplus and then 30 percent surplus so imagine we would be actually installing a much bigger uh, power plant and the benefits that we have in terms of savings they grow uh, along with additional um, generation uh, and of course the impact of having the flexibility helps us to absorb this additional surplus that we have with the community and continue matching the generation the, the consumption with the generation um, the, the, the second uh, results that we have uh, deployed here in the Iberia project was uh, assessing if we would have 20%, uh, always 20% of surplus, uh, how this would look like if we multiply uh, the flexibility available. And what we see is, yes, we can actually increase the savings by multiplying the flexibility available for us to use by two and by three, um, achieving uh, in, the, in the final scenario um, uh, more than than uh, well 28% um, uh, or so of additional savings uh, by adding this flexibility. So 
one of the, the, the main um, results that we see here is actually by providing the, by implementing AI algorithms to use the flexibility and with scenarios where we can actually connect more and more flexible loads like EV chargers or batteries or heat pumps, we can actually increase uh, the savings that we, that we will get in an energy community. Um, and important is also uh, uh, to say that energy community with a high level of um, surplus can actually then help us to maximize the benefits of the overall community members. Um, so in terms of conclusions, uh, VPP and AI technology are available today and you can actually scale the deployment of these smart energy communities. The business models are showing uh, big benefits that we can bring uh, to the multiple stakeholders in an energy community. Uh, it, it is also an opportunity for us then to assess flexible uh, loads to provide more uh, services to the grid to have grid stability and security of supply. Um, and the way that we are looking at the market and for the CleanWatts has been assessing the market and deploying multiple energy communities, we see a, a big willingness to be part of energy communities from the part of the end users. We still have challenges, um, challenges to unlock uh, and connect with small loads. Uh, how can we actually simplify to assess these loads uh, so that our end users are um, more willing uh, to um, enter in this kind of projects. Um, and another one, a uh, big challenge is actually to assess uh, private funds to uh, start and, and deploy these energy communities when we have the centralized ownership model, uh, given that it's not that easy to actually ask anyone to uh, invest uh, on a PV generation. And in terms of energy poverty, we really need to assess these private funds to make it more uh, easy and accessible for everyone. So this means that we need regulators and policymakers to recognize the potential of energy sharing um, and uh, the creation of local flexible markets to support system operators uh, as well. So that's it from my side and thank you very much for inviting me here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lisa, to, pre to present us uh, the initiative. Yeah. Now, uh, yeah, it's time to uh, to give the floor to Sebastian for the end of this initiative. So please, I'm just Sebastian to start sharing the screen. Hello. Um, voilà, je suis sur le bon écran. Uh, good morning. Um, my name is uh, Sébastien Brun, working today as a Smart Grid uh, Project Manager at uh, Enedis International Department. Previously, I worked at uh, Enedis Smart Grid Department and uh, will present you uh, today Cartoline, part of a project I went in charge of. Can you see my, uh, my screen? Yes? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, um, I will uh, uh, present you a uh, background and uh, objectives of uh, Cartoline, uh, implementation, challenge and uh, benefits. Alors, uh, yes, Cartoline is part of a larger project that aims to use smart metering infrastructure to improve network performance. Smart metering is not just metering, billing, remote operation, like a power change, etc. Uh, it also offers a new observability of what happens on the grid, with more precision on a smaller scale, in real time and in delayed time. This delivers values for uh, non-technical losses hunting, real-time solutions for incident troubleshooting, high voltage and low voltage, Geographic information system reliability for studies and planning to optimize network and its hosting capacities to support historical and new uses, electric mobility and uh, uh, renewable energy integration. Cartoline is a predictive maintenance tool, so before the incident occurs, it becomes possible to, to plan troubleshooting during office hours rather than uh, endure it at night or on the weekend. 
Cartoline is a spin-off of our low voltage real time incident detection and diagnosis solution. During the experimentation of this first uh, solution, it became clear that some alarms were not the, the thing, the sign of a real electrical failure, but either the symptom of a future incident or just a simple temporary anomaly. How do you differentiate between these last two categories? Cataline is a supervised machine learning solution which classify, then request confirmation from technicians, quality of supply anomalies, surge, under voltage, brief interruption, into two categories, intervention needed in a few days or no intervention needed. needed. It also uses geographic information system description data, like type of cable, overhead or underground grid, etc. Uh, so Cartoline also offers a diagnosis of the incident cause in order to facilitate this special kind of uh, early troubleshooting. The challenge we had to solve. Um, when we design our low voltage incident detection solution, we believed that one alarm was equal to one incident. And that was wrong. So we had to implement filters to check that anomaly was observed by several meters uh, during uh, several minutes. First challenge, we had to review our solution. What about the rejected alarms? Smart metering re-questioned what we thought we knew, and we had to accept. Experts, national services in charge of prescribing had to accept. This was our third challenge. Thinking about this question, we adjusted it to rethink it differently. And at last, the real question was, what are the symptoms which clearly mean that I will have to intervene. We cannot respond in a, an anticumber, in only in a back office. Um, we can only respond by sitting around the same table, field technicians, national professional expert in charge of prescription, and data scientists. Finally, we had to review the first solution but it was the opportunity to develop a new one, Cataline. And ultimate challenge, we had to review our troubleshooting business process. Cataline enables more efficient operation of low voltage network. Not only do smart grids make possible to observe network in finer detail, but Cataline takes full advantage of this new data. As a supervised machine learning solution, it also places the expertise of field technician at the heart of this intelligence, which is no longer artificial. Cataline predicts 10% of all low voltage incidents, all due to natural network wear and tear, about three weeks before it occurs. You can see uh, concrete uh, examples in the, the photo, uh, including uh, on the left side, the same low voltage panel seen with the naked eye on the one hand, and then with a non-fared uh, camera. Today, over 99% of its predictions are confirmed by business experts. Its pre-diagnosis saves two hours of troubleshooting per incident. In many cases, customers don't even experience the outage. Thank you for your attention. Uh, don't hesitate to address me uh, your questions and uh, thank you very much for inviting me uh, on this Sidgan uh, webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sebastian. Thank you uh, for presenting us uh, the Cartoline project. Yeah, I remind uh, all the, uh, the audience that all the speakers are available to answer to your questions. So please pose your question with the question and answer tool here in Teams or in Slido, and uh, yeah, we'll, 
And now, uh, yeah, it's time to uh, present the CAPCO initiative. So I give the floor to Aeson Lee that, uh, yeah, will introduce you to uh, the TIA experience. Okay. Hi. Hi, everyone. I am Aeson Lee, a researcher at CAPCO. And it's an honor to be here today. Um, in July, CAPCO received an honor of mention at the at the ASEAN Awards, and thank you very much again. And so today, I'm going to talk about our CAPCO's prediction system. This is my content, and okay. Um, this is the uh, reason why we developed it, this, this system. Nowadays, companies like Capco are taking extra steps to prevent accident in the workplace due to the Serious, serious Punishment Act in Korea. These laws mean that if a serious industrial act, act industrial or severe accident occurs, the person in charge could face jail time up to a year or more. So this is a very a big issue for Korean businesses. So <clears throat> to maintain safety, CAPCO needs to forecast the power system status to prevent facility failure or and safety accident. And additionally, South Korea has allowed the DR under one megawatt to connect to distribution lines without any restriction in order to promote DR. So as you can see the below figure, the number of distribution lines and the capacity of the DR in distribution lines are increasing rapidly. This means we need a cost-effective asset optimization tool to keep cost down. So, and also the asset management paradigm is also changing. In the past, we just used facilities for a certain period of time and then we replaced them, but, but now we are, we are replacing facilities based on how cost effective and reliability it is. That's because we are more focused on improving efficiency and saving money to manage our assets. So, so therefore we carried out the CAPCO asset optimization project. The project was carried out for five years and start, uh, this is starting in 2017. And we have developed uh, two systems. One is grid state prediction system and the other is asset state prediction system. Uh, the, these systems contain a lot of functions such as load forecasting and calculating health index score and estimate the remaining lifetime. And we we the we serve the um, uh, the reporting of the replay uh, the estimation result to distribution operators. And these systems have been operational in Korea. Uh, starting the, the last year. So this time I introduced the CAPCO's asset management process and the role of the prediction systems. This shows the CAPCO asset management procedures. Um, the main distribution facilities such as transformer or switches can cause power outages due to the more functions. So therefore, CAPCO conducts the diagnosis, inspection, and observation regularly to prevent outages. However, we could not diagnose them all because the, we are we have uh, over three million main distribution facilities. So we developed the health index standards for managing and the replacement facilities. But the, the, to figure out the health index score and the, re, uh, the remaining lifetime of facilities, we need to consider factors like risk, cost, and the budget analysis. And we have we need uh, the vast operating data. 
and also the load forecasting is especially important for uh, important both distribution planning and calculating health index score. So the system we developed in this project can help us manage our the process related to uh, predicting facilities state. The system automatically predict health index scores and peak load and the remaining lifetime of facilities. This system helps us make better decisions about when to replace facilities. And they can we can we can achieve high accuracy by relearning data method in this system. And this diagram shows the structure of Kepka's asset optimization system for predicting the grid and asset state. The system connects in real time with environmental information such as climate or geographic data. And, and the Kepka's legacy system like DAS or SOMAS like you can see the in the green label and and uh, we de developed the system using Kepco's cloud platform so all servers are hosted on the cloud platform as indicated by the blue box in this diagram so anyone who can connect Capco's network can use this system. So in the, the distribution operators in Capco using this system in our company. So I'll show the workflow of each system briefly. This is the workflow of the grid forecasting process. As mentioned earlier, we we co we collected historical data and identified abnormal data, including load transfer or or error data or or outage data, and we specifically forecast the load data using machine learning algorithms. And the system provides prediction results such as um, unbalanced load data and uh, ratio of the lo load on each dis dis distribution line. Um, <clears throat> previously, um, we manually analyzed the grid load trend for forecasting the grid state, but this type of algorithm process time was too long and the accuracy was so low, so we applied the hybrid MLP method in this system, in this project, to forecast the grid load. Grid load. Uh, the hybrid MLP means that they, they consist of a statistical method and MLP method. So this table shows the comparison um, between previous and proposed algorithm. The required time for learning the hybrid MLP algorithm was 30 seconds per each distribution line and the average accuracy is approximately 19%. So it is more effective than the LSTM or an previous method. And this time I showed the assessed state prediction system workflow. Um, similar to the grid state prediction system, the asset state prediction system also gathers legacy data and create an create a master table asset master table. The asset master table is the cornerstone of a asset management system, and we generate unique um, ID numbers using various legacy data for each facilities, and this allows um, us to track the asset entire life cycle and the system calculates the health index score and estimates the remaining lifetime using this ID and the other operation data. When predicting the residual life of facilities and calculating health index scores, we use the survival analysis and and the machine learning algorithm such as random forest. So 
mm, I want to show our system, but but the system can only be accessed from the internal our Capco network. So uh, I'll show the main screen very quickly. This is the main screen of the grid state prediction system. And this is the main dashboard the system. Uh, we can see the summary of the forecasting the uh, load and the connected uh, state of data. And this is the decision support for distribution planning page. We can see um, uh, uh, this this section presents the um, distribution line priority index for replacement. So uh, using this index, we can make a distribution line replacement plan. And this page is um, uh, shows the accuracy of the of the algorithm. The system continuous compares the forecasting result to real data to ensure the accuracy. So this comparison allows the system to automatically relearn and continuous improve its prediction accuracy. And uh, this is the main page of asset state prediction system. We can see the health index creation process monitoring, and we can see the state of data quality. The in this is the data acquisition page. We can check the data acquisition ratio and detect error data on this page. And the system gives the alarm to operator the about the error data. And we can also use the system to simulate how much facility we need to replace in the future. This helps us um, make a meter or long term replacement plan by providing operators with this visual effect. And the system provides facility location and uh, facility replacement priority, priority information in GIS. And this enables um, operators to quickly they, they identify high risk facilities. So this is my conclusion. The paradigm of asset management is changing so and we have vast data from the, the facilities so data pre-processing and the reliability are more important to us so capco developed the ai based asset optimization tool and complete field application and to continuously improve forecasting AI accuracy, uh, real-time data connection and load pattern relearning are required. So we adopted a relearning method in this system to pro improve our accuracy. So <clears throat> as a result, um, we have achieved a 15% reduction in our power distribution investment and operating budget. So this is my last page in this presentation. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much for presenting yeah, the Capital Initiative. Yeah, that was, um, so now uh, it's time for the last presentation of today from IntelliSmart. So, uh, Mr. Gautam Kumar, please uh, share your screen and uh, well, we are all here. Uh, this is Gautam uh, Kumar and I am Chief Technology Officer for IntelliSmart. And IntelliSmart is a company which has been focusing mostly on the smart metering deployment in country. So as in India, we have around 250 million customers and as a technology reference, a program is going on on replacing these meters to smart meters. And while we were doing last two, three years, we are doing some pilots has been done and then we have done one level of rollouts, which is now reaching to almost half a million meters at this moment. And uh, when we did we started doing this implementation, we found that a lot of data is coming out, out of this. 
and with this data, we can use uh, uh, beyond the metering side, uh, billing another part. We could use this data on and the existing data from the discoms, the utilities in India, and can get more benefit. And that's where this program has just started up. Though the data, when we look into, we have petabytes of data, but how we use is an important aspect. The older way of handling the analytics was doing uh, the analysis, getting into the tables, and the core issue which is coming into from the disparate sources which have been used to analyze the data or to get the data first. So that's the where we found and use this uh, advanced analytics part and then the machine learning on how to first extract the data in a way that that could be analyzed and then and use the advanced analytics part there to how to analyze in a more concentrated way of and using it. We did a pilot in 2021 and September 21 with one of the discoms where we were putting up advanced meters, uh, smart meters. Almost half a million of smart meters are placed in this discount. So we started with, and the focus was to see how we can uh, look into the loss reduction programs and typically on the revenue protection side. So when we started with the revenue protection, some of the things which we have started is to focus on the energy theft detection, how to detect with these data and the other patterns uh, and from the billing patterns also, how to detect and uh, plug out the revenues. Revenue, uh, any leakage in the rib. It may be due to data, it may be due to theft. So, this is the key actually, which is the reason of, uh, is the objective of this project. So, the revenue assurance, when we are speaking of the revenue assurance part, so three areas are being focused out. One is uh, on the consumption uh, of the metering. So, it started with the revenue assurance part, first is the consumption of metering, then metering to billing, and billing to payment. And consumption to the metering is basically look into the uh, uh, consumption pattern of the customers or the users actually the, who are using the electricity and see that how the use, uh, they are using there uh, and having a pattern around that and find who are the highest customers who would be uh, maybe stealing energy or th there is a chance of pilfage. Then another point which came to is the billing errors and then we have started analyzing and where the billing errors are creeping in or possibly the not right uh, uh, billing, uh, I can say, uh, determinants and the tariff structures or something misuse. So that's where we started looking into why the billing errors are coming. And then what is the payment pattern to look in how the collection efficiency could improve for the discounts for the distribution companies to increase their revenue, whatever they have built for. So uh, these are the few focus area which which this project has started. To, uh, this, uh, to detect, discover, and plug the revenue leakage across the meter to cash cycle. And we started using the data from disparate uh, 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 solutions, uh, uh, application platform. One is our own smart meter uh, project, and there are other billing projects where there, there are AMR, other AMR projects are there. So there are multiple, there are GIS platforms are there. So we collected information to, and then uh, normalize them. So the first is to collect that right, uh, set of data which could be analyzed. So there were the first thing started up to convert the to first identify the raw the correct raw data, then reprocessing the remove the special characters, strings, and all those so that it could come on a data lake and could be analyzed. Then the how to enrich the data. So time series data were there. How we use the time series data which could be like the meter data or mostly time series data, billing collection. So pattern analysis could be done very well. Then we started looking into because the water data volume is very high. So we started up a machine learning principle while extracting the data and then normalizing them and used many of the logics to apply and see how results could be achieved in a shorter time. So this is the one thing which the project has happened in three phases. First, we identified the what are the problem statement of the discoms and who and then did the workshop, uh, looked into the available data. And then uh, KPIs have been defined. What all KPIs we need to monitor. And when these KPIs are identified, the second was to baseline them, right? So we baseline each and every data set and they identified the KPIs, then documented the base value. Then only you can find out what benefit because it is not in a complete discount. It is uh, done in a pilot area. In a, one small pilot area, we selected it for doing because use data. This discount has around uh, uh, 
uh, 1.2 million customers. So we selected only a, a small volume, a volume 50, 60,000 customers. And then we started uh, doing this to have a pilot, uh, which is done in three months period. So then uh, this all process uh, has been done and then assisted the companies to find out what objectives have been done, uh, looked into the uh, identified uh, correction areas. The correction has been done and then we re it. So one or two cycles of recorrections have been implemented and so that we can uh, fathom out what the benefit are and where we can get the best results out of whatever we are analyzing. Into. So this is uh, this all been done in our cloud environment. We have a data uh, lake and uh, and other engines which we use for other projects and we use this to create a data lake for our data engine room. I can say uh, uh, where we analyze this information. So. Uh, some of the key, which is the outcome of this, is when we started looking into when we baseline in September, when with the existing systems, right? There were 120 customers were identified for anomalies or the theft. With this process, we could find out 252 high potential customers where theft could be there. So this way, we could see that we almost doubled out with the AI, the these logics, uh, almost doubled out our uh, predictions actually. The billing uh, ratio was earlier, so we found a lot of in the billing uh, issues also, and those are also increased out. So this is a clear indication if we extrapolate, so this would lead into this much of revenue across the, when you extrapolate across the discounts. Then the contracted demands were there, but uh, it was not able to, because smart meters have been installed, they could look into the contracted versus actual. And that analysis has given that down 421 additional customers with an additional revenue of 3.2 crore rupees on a monthly basis could be done. High bill generation cases were there, we could identify them. The complaint defaults, uh, default in the high billing. So these are some of the things which we have seen that what was in past and how much we could do more with the new uh, and could find out with this that around 226 uh, or in a case 260 million rupees actually we could save out of uh, if we do and extrapolate with the complete uh, uh, in a uh, year time in a complete discounts uh, uh, that particular uh, uh, utility so this is what the revenue impact we could see so project outcomes, when we look into the project outcomes, uh, the uh, few of the things which we see is that uh, identifying the high risk customers and then uh, optimization of many of the processes. Basically, we looked into how the process could be optimized. Some of the data sanity checks, which when the data has been put into the system, so those were uh, how we can block them out at the stage where uh, the process of data in ingestion is happening in the system. So some of these are basically are the key outcomes. And when we look into the project application, the way it has been there, so we have analyzed and bring this platform in a larger aspect now and creating a large platform for discoms to use because they don't have this platform with them. So we are providing a discom of uh, uh, all these discoms, basically distribution companies with uh, 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 on three in the particularly four area in the asset op operations how they can re, uh, do the asset operations better with this portfolio analysis like forecasting we discussed on that part and renewable forecasting other type of forecastings are there or integration real integration then the revenue analytics and other applications like segmentation demand and so a platform is getting created out of uh, this pilot when we uh, developed this uh, pilot project and then now it is getting scaled up to do this uh, across uh, these four areas so so this is from my side thank you very much thank you very much uh, gautam uh, for presenting the intellis smart initiative and now we are um, yeah uh, like running out of time but uh, we have few questions so uh well let's make like a, a fast round table of uh, questions and so um uh we have two questions for uh, uh NADs, for the NADs initiative so for sebastian that regards uh, uh the um, the data that is used to uh, train the models uh, and uh, well which kind of failures uh, can be detected you using uh, the smart meters. Well, could you could you please uh, uh, yeah say something about this? Thank you. 
Yes, um, the data we use, um, we use um, every data about uh, voltage recorded by um, the meter. I mean, uh, surge over voltage, under voltage, brief interruption. Uh, we can have a single phase meter or three phases uh, meter. Um, so this is the first set of data we use. Uh, um, another um, kind of data are uh, about um, uh, um, the grid uh, description. Uh, uh, what kind of uh, cable uh, overhead on the ground? Uh, what is the, the material uh, of the of the cable? Um, also, is there any producer um, producer uh, close to the to the to the meter or on the grid? Um, that are the main kind of, uh, of data we use. And it's important to say that it's a supervised machine learning solution. So um, field technician um, confirm or, or do not confirm uh, the prediction of the tool, but uh, um, that won't stop. It, it, once the tool is trained, we keep uh, we keep uh, ask uh, technicians. Uh, we keep ask a confirmation uh, to 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 technicians. Okay, thank you, thank you very much to yeah to answer to this question to provide some more insight. Yeah, yeah. Next, then next question is for is for the Capco initiative. Uh, yeah, on artificial intelligence. So uh, the question is uh, for uh, Ilson Lee. And it is about uh, the um, the range of the uh, asset monitoring system. Does the um, the Capco uh, monitoring system uh, cover uh, the entire Korea? Uh, yes. As we use this system in in Korea and all the Capco um, operators can connect this system and they use this system and and we we revised the um, distribution standards like health index standards and um, um, DAS in installation standards. We revised these standards using these systems. So all the Capco's operators are using this system yeah okay taking question is for intellismart uh, so for mr gautam kumar is about uh, um, uh, the transformer so does intellismart has pd data from transformer so there is any inverter duty transformer failures uh, in the study so yes, we have used the transformer data also, and that has been provided by Discom. They have some uh, transformer meter. Most of these are distribution transformers. So from there, we have extracted the data from the DT meters from their systems. Okay, thank you very thank you very much for answering to this question. Yeah, and uh, well. So we are five minutes over time, so I need to close the webinar. Really big thanks to all the speakers, to Luisa Matos from CleanVat, to Sebastian Brun from Hennedis, to Hanson Lee from Kepco, and for, for, to Gautam Kumar from IntelliSmart. And thank you for their availability to present uh, uh, today the uh, initiative that has been awarded by the ISGAN Award of Excellence, that in this case was for uh, artificial intelligence and uh, many thanks also to Chloe for uh, yeah organizing uh, uh, the um, the Isgan award and to uh, make possible uh, this webinar so yeah the the recordings of this webinar will be available on YouTube and uh, yeah so you can watch it anytime so thank you very much and thank you again to all the speakers yeah have a nice day thank you thank you Thank you. Thank you.